And we're back with some RimWorld Anomaly. Uh, I have been trying to avoid spoilers on this for the last week and it was very, very, very painful. I just basically have not been on the internet much at all. Okay, the Anomaly. Two researchers and a ghoul investigate an ancient monolith. Okay, okay, I'm like a look at this. Right, the explanation here is your research expedition has finally arrived at the source of the anomalous signal. An ancient architect monolith on a distant planet. As you survey the structure from orbit, the scanner's audio forms garbled syllables which repeat your own name over and over. Your crewmate screams as their flesh begins flowing and reforming. Oh, wow. A blinding beam of energy reaches up from the planet and tears your research vessel apart. You have disturbed something ancient and inhuman. Note, this is a di difficult scenario and is not recommended for new players. Your faction will be a research expedition. Start with one ghoul and two colonists. Start with research security door? And battery. Uh, Google transport pod crash incident created. Okay. Uh, the weird thing here is you got twisted meat 100. Holding platform. Proximity detector. Textbooks by two. Tome. Uh, or tomb, whichever way you want to say it. Uh, Bioferrite and a turret pack? I don't know what those are. Okay. Uh, let's see what that brings for us. Well, it's got to be Randy, of course. He's the only one that's any fun. And we'll check it on losing his fun, we'll crank up the threat, and then we'll probably die horrifically because we won't know what's going on half the time. Uh, no, reload any time, otherwise I might lose the whole playthrough. Hey, anyway, we'll randomize three times, and then we'll just hit generate from there. We're not going to do any messing with these things. Oh, was that keyword gore? Was the keyword gore? That's, yeah, I've left all the other, like, the base DLCs installed, but nothing else. Just the DLCs, no mods, no nothing. Uh, we're going to hit random three times. One, two, three. And where does that put us? Temperate forest? Uh, no, one more. I, I can't. I've like I've done temperate forest so often. Let's try something slightly different. And we've temperate forest. Okay, one more. The, the first non-temperate forest. Desert. Uh, fine, fine. Where is this gonna put us? Uh, we've got slate, marble, and limestone. It's not terrible. I'm pretty sure we can trade with those guys, can we? You know what? Doesn't make a difference. Did did the random has spoken? Growing period thirty to sixty days. This is gonna be rough. Rainfall, pretty low. Forgeability, 20, uh, 25%. Agave fruit. Ooh, yeah, this is going to be... This is going to be interesting. All right, ideology-wise, we're a research faction, so it's got to be, like, something research-related. Uh, we'll create a fluid one. I'm hoping that there's other ideologies we can get because there's going to be some weird horror stuff going on. Uh, so we'll create a fluid one. And since we... Uh, Oh, this is just a symbol. Ideological, like, we're researchers. I mean, ideological sounds better. It's got to be transhumanist, I think. Of all of them, if we're researchers, this will be a pain in the butt to work on top of everything else. But sleep accelerators, neural superchargers, biosculpting, age reversal, nutrient paste, don't mind, body foundification approved. Oh, yeah, it's got to be. Okay, so we're going with transhumanist. This is going to be weird. Uh, then... What do we want as modifications down here? Give me a second. Using the randomize button a little bit liberally, we've got MJ Gonzalez was a bioscientist in the early days of human planetary colonization. Seeing the bureaucratic restrictions of the common colony, she took a small ship to found her own movement. MJ assembled a team of great scientists and inventors to redefine humanity. MJ carried a persona Zeus hammer named Murder Maker with her everywhere to remind people to eat it in just your life. Or else. Yeah, if you've got a if you've got a Zeus hammer called Murder Maker and you're reminding people of something, it's an or else situation. Uh, we'll just leave all of this as default. I'm not going to mess with any of that. I've uh, removed the clothing requirements for the roles. I just find those really annoying to keep track of. Uh, then you have to change them into armor when you want them to fight. Meh. And I've made a bunch of Sky Lantern festivals, social festivals, dance parties, but all of them don't do anything useful. All they do is to help us discover ancient complexes, which no one cares about. So yes, we can discover lots of ancient complexes with our rituals. No one cares. And all of our relics are Persona Zeus Hammers, because I just love Persona Zeus Hammers. Uh, there we go. Uh, I didn't even rename any of them anything too crazy. Okay, we'll stick in a Lunks Dunk, and I just r random that till it said Promise Crusher, which I kind of like. Promise Crusher seems good. All right, let's, uh, let's do this. Oh yeah, we have to pick people. Now, I was thinking about picking some trait that all of them have to have, Oh, this is a ghoul. Right. Looking a little bit skinny there, buddy. Uh, ghoul. This person has been implanted with an architect shard, twisting them into a jittering murder machine. Its body is an amalgam of flesh and metal, while its mind cycles between half-conscious stupor and murderous intent. They cannot work. They only fight. Ghouls must eat raw meat. If they go hungry, they can turn hostile. Oh, okay. So risk-reward. Many find ghouls constant twitching to be disturbing, even when they aren't killing someone. 
Uh, pain by 0%, minimal comfort temperature minus 40, max comfort temperature plus 40. Okay, so they're basically almost immune to heat and cold, which is good, we're in a desert. Minimum containment strength plus 35, max nutrition 200%, psychic sensitivity zero. Right. Well, hmm. Let me have a quick fiddle through some of these and see if we've got anything that spikes my fancy. One thing I've noticed is some people come with weird, like, fleshy appendages. Like, look at this guy, he has a tentacle whip. Fleshy whip, a, f a fleshy muscle tentacle with a blade at the end. The flesh whip makes an excellent melee weapon. It has its own neural structures and may become dangerous if removed. Okay. Um, I have some ideas here. Okay, okay, I've got it. Here's the play. Normally what I do is I just, I only pick from the starting colonists that we get offered. That way you kind of have to make some compromises and you might end up with the odd drug addict or pyromaniac because you don't have a choice. This time, I pick stats that I thought would go to us. What I want to do is do a sort of a science anomaly cult type thing where all of our people are into science and they want to like get you know push the boundaries and stuff so the only people who are going to be into that are basically body modders uh psychopaths and people with bloodlust so anyone who's got a body modder bloodlust or psychopath we have to hire those people anyone who doesn't have those things we can't hire them or oh, they have to have one of those three traits preferably two at a time that'd be great like a bloodlust body modder or a psychopathic body modder they would be you know excellent so, I spun all of these until we ended up with Body Modder, Psychopath, or Bloodlust, and then kept going until we had, uh, well, all of them picked out. Well, all of them rolled. Then we had to pick out the colonists we wanted, and we had to make some interesting decisions. The only person with construction is this one. Uh, all the rest, like, this one has five construction, but they don't have an actual star in it, which means the only person who can actually learn construction at any reasonable rate is this one. Uh, so, very limiting. Next up, we needed someone who could do plants, because, well, we're going to need to plant some food at some point, and preferably social as well, and preferably medical. Unfortunately, no one has medical. There's literally no medical anywhere. None of these have a spark for medical. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure, yeah, four medical is about the highest on anyone, and it's on this one. So that left us with plants anyway, and social, so we can hire more people to fill in all the horrible gaps we're going to have. Yet, yeah, there's, there's no one else with plants except this one, which is sass. So there's sass who unfortunately has an artery blockage, a bite scar, and yeah, they're 66, which could be a problem. I mean, their social intellectual is great, their plants is good, it's just they're going to be really slow and they're probably going to have a heart attack and die, which would be a problem considering our construction person is already pregnant. Yep, yep, we're just going to have to deal with that. Now we have to just give them their patron names. Uh, I'm going to start at the bottom here because you're not going to believe how the top one worked out for the ghoul, but uh, yes, uh, this is Smirk. Yep, so welcome Smirk to the team. They're a psychopath, they have a flesh whip for a shoulder, they have a lover, a daughter, a granddaughter, and a son-in-law. I'm sure all, actually, King, Cla yeah, King is actually in here as one of the options. That's their son-in-law? Sass is their granddaughter. Tara is their daughter. And Nina is their lover. Wait, so all of these are related to them. And they got stench instead. Well, okay, that won't be stench for a little longer. Right, actually, wait, it's this middle name that you have to change. Anyway, okay, so this is Smirk. Then... Next up, we have Peshit. Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, at least Smirk was easy to get, so uh, uh, hopefully that's Peshit, and I'm not going to mangle that too much, because I'm going to be saying that a lot in the future, I'd say. All right, they're going to be our constructor. They're also going to be our artistic, our intellectual, our researcher, our minor, and also the first mother in the colony. So they're going to need to build stuff really quickly, otherwise we're going to run into a lot of trouble, because, well, once they actually have their kid, that's going to really take them out of circulation for a while. And finally, we have uh, Dumb Shit. Yep, that's, uh, that was a patron's name, and you know what? If they're gonna do it, that's fine. Fine. You want it? Here you go. And I just love that it actually rolled on the ghoul, because if that had rolled on one of the others, that would have been weird. Actually, no, it's gonna be weird either way, but still, it turns out that it rolled on the ghoul, so that's fine. Okay, team, let's get started. All right. The ancient monolith unleashed an energy pulse that tore your research vessel apart and mutated your crew. Only a few of you made it to the escape pods. Despite the setback, your mission is far from over. If you can learn more about the monolith, perhaps you can find a way to shut it down or harness its inhuman power. Ooh, harnessing its inhuman power sounds like something a crazy science cult would do. So, yeah, let's get on top of that. Oh, no, first let's not die. Then let's get on top of that. All uh, right, let's pause. Uh, let's take stock of what we got and... Hey, this is without the camera thingy, so we can v zoom out quite far now. Uh, so, we have food over there, we have ooh, anima tree, if we want to get people, now we don't have anyone we can hook up to the anima tree, yet, more animals, damn, this zoom out map view is actually quite nice, and that's default now, this must be 1.5, uh, what do we have in terms of arable land, well, 
Could be better. Could be better. It's five degrees outdoors. Oh, yeah, we must be in a cold area of the map. We are pretty far north. Uh, yeah, this is going to suck. Uh, at least we have the Finger District nearby. They can hopefully trade with us for something to help keep us alive, though the distance will be a bit painful. Ugh. And we're not going to have any caravan animals for a while. Okay, let me take stock here of the situation. Just some quick notes here. The, I was just checking on the ghoul, and I was checking under operations to see if we could do anything with them. Surgical inspection. An invasive surgery to find any hidden abnormalities within a patient. What do you mean, hidden abnormalities? Yep, yeah, that's a kit. Uh, yep, yeah, that's available in all of them. Um, ooh. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. So they can get hidden abnormalities on them? Good ones? Bad ones? Evil ones? Hmm. What are you? You're a shard. Also, there's this twisted meat here. Uh, this makes me uncomfortable. I'm pretty sure the twisted meat is for dumb shit. The ghoul. And if we run out of the meat, well, they'll die. Or, not die, they'll get aggressive because they won't have anything to eat. So we need to keep that meat fresh, which means the first thing we're going to do is build a refrigeration area to keep that stored. Uh, it'll last four days in the desert, assuming it doesn't rain, but we're in the desert, so you know what's the likelihood that it'll rain? It'll probably be fine. When I was setting up the priorities, I noticed there's a new tab. Dark studying. Or dark study. Uh, relevant skills, intellectual. Interact with anomalous entities. That seems... Interesting. Uh, where is that? In there is that fallen monolith. Twisted lines carved into the surface form a disturbing pattern. Investigate to learn more. Maybe in a minute we're going to need some accommodation, I think, first. Oh, come. Uh, right. Okay, so we found a proximity detector here. I'm like, what's a proximity detector? A scanner capable of detecting invisible creatures. Uh, the device raises an alarm when it detects the presence of, sight of physically invisible biosignatures within its radius. That seems... Like that would be a problem now that we have invisible enemies. Hmm. Right. That's uh. What the hell is the Nervorix? Good. Uh. Details. In this readable work, an archetypal witch doctor recounts explorations into a secret cult with a base under a remote meadow. It spends a long time attempting to describe a hyperintelligent entity called Horax that exists in an adjacent plane of reality. The book is useful, but often too concerned with the author's own personal interests. Mental break chance, 4.5% an hour. Void provocation, 0 0.3 an hour when discovered. What? Okay, let's not read that just yet. That's basically the, the Book of the Dead. Got it. Uh, okay, these are books that you can use to increase your stats. So this one increases artistic. Yeah, that's that's useless. Uh, cooking and animals. That... Oh, uh, God, actually, no, we don't need that either. We're, we're kind of going to be just shooting everything. We're not going to be farming anything. And, uh, well, when it comes to cooking, nutrient paste for the win. We're technologists, remember? Right, so we got books that are of no use to us, pretty much, except for, you know, that weird horcrux-looking thing over there. Um, Give me a minute. I need to scout out a plan. We need to be able to plant food, but we also need to set ourselves up some accommodation and get ourselves a fridge area. Uh, this seems probably creepy, so if anyone goes near it, it's probably going to freak them out. Oh, and dumb shit might as well get themselves a gun while they're there. They're going to be doing all the hunting for us because, well, that's probably all they can do. Can you pick something up or... Oh, he, he can't pick up a gun. Well, that's a problem. Okay, okay. Got the guts of a plan. I'm going to go with my traditional 18 down, 17 and across grid design. Namely because... Otherwise, I'll spend hours trying to figure out what the optimum... Play it's not worth it. Not worth it. Just go with something default and you'll at least get a decision made. Over here, this is going to be our field. Uh, there's lots of normal soil in here. And I think if we take up these floor tiles, you can see underneath it looks to be regular soil. So we'll end up with even a little bit more farmland to grow stuff on. As well as that, this will keep the uh, the monolith in there. I don't know if you have to investigate that from the front. Or th oh, you do have to investigate it from the front. We'll have to, like, put a weird door system there so that someone can, you know meditate at it or study it uh, we'll see but the most important thing is we need to get a fridge up in the next well preferably two days before that meat goes off otherwise uh dumb shit might go on a bit of a rampage uh also as well as that uh you can go pick a fight with that camel in fact are any of these camels unhealthy let's start with an unhealthy camel first if they got one oh would you look at that you are perfect dementia cataracts asthma you are exactly what we've been looking for. Right there. Uh, basically, as far as I can tell, that ghoul can't equip anything. No clothes, no weapons, no nothing. You can just 
punch stuff. Also, it does not need to sleep. It just eats. That's it. So it's an unbreakable punching machine. I like the idea. All right. Um, right. We want to unforbid all items on the map. There's there's a lot of them. There's steel, all sorts of stuff. In fact, we're going to be building a lot with steel and wood. We're also going to have a few problems in terrain affordance. You'll notice here, this is soft sand. You can't build on that. It's, well, you can eventually if you get moisture pumps, but that's a long way down the tech tree. Tech tree wise, this is very interesting. We actually start with air conditioning, batteries, uh, nutrient paste dispensers, security doors, which I'm not sure. Build a heavily reinforced door. It is slow to open and requires power, but it's very strong. It's a good choice if you want to keep something dangerous out or in. Right, there's also an anomaly tree that uh, there's nothing in that yet. It seems we haven't gotten that far. We've also got stone cutting to start, which is excellent. However, where is it? We don't have solar panels, which I'm fine with, but uh, yeah, that's okay. And windmills. Do we have windmills? I think you start with windmills by default. It has been a while. Yep, we get wind turbines to start. We're probably going to be going straight for a wind turbine and a battery, namely because wood fire generators, yeah, we, we can't afford it. There's just no wood on this map. We're on a desert. So I figure we build this in as our core base. Uh, there's going to put the fridge here. One second. Let me finish off this kind of rough pattern. So something like that will be the fridge, and then we'll have the uh, nutrient paste dispenser sticking out here. That way we can store the meat in there, hopefully quickly and efficiently. We're also going to need to put down the wind turbine pretty fast. I'm probably thinking over here. Thing is, we could put the wind turbine over this side or out here, but I want to wall it in eventually. And since this area is going to end up getting walled in, that probably is the better place to put it. But we need somewhere to keep everyone to sleep in first, so I'm thinking here sounds good. However, before we go any further, I'm going to install a quick mod. The mods in question are colorblind mineral mods, because people have thanked me for that in the past, and I, I don't want to let them down at this point. And Camera Plus. Uh, the reason we're using Camera Plus is it allows us to bookmark a location on the map. So if I'm about to end a recording, I can bookmark the location, and then when I cut in at the next part, it's on the same location. It's less jarring for people, I find. So, for example, this is Alt-1, and then just say I've gone off and done something else and it's time to cut back in. I can then shift back to here, and then it looks like I haven't really moved and done a whole bunch of other stuff elsewhere. Okay, with those mods in place, it's time to start building this up, and we're going to be using steel, like a lot of steel for this. Basically because steel is the most common thing we have. Uh, something like that we'll have to do. Uh, now, some of these areas here will have to be wood, namely because, well, that's all that can be supported on the terrain type. Thing is, we're also going to need to put in a few other things. That needs to be deconstructed. And uh, we also need to put in a cooler over here. And let's let them run, out, run away at it. Where are you going? Uh, holding steel. Yep, there's a whole bunch of steel around. So there's like a thousand steel nearby. These researchers start with a lot of it. I love the Smirk's little tentacle arm thing. That is so weird. All right, we're also going to put in a wooden a door on each side. Yep, yeah, let's let them get to work. But while they're doing that, dumb shit's going to go beat down a geriatric camel. Nope, that's the wrong one. Where is it? Ah, there we go. Scratch from a ghoul claw. Okay, and it hit them in the eye as well. You go, dumb shit. Okay. Okay, Dimshit's taking damage. Ten hit points gone from the arm. Oh, you can literally see it heal in real time. 9.8, 9.7. Wow, that is unnaturally fast healing. They did not undersell that. I mean, didn't oversell it. Nope, they sold it just about exactly where it needs to be. They're not great, they're still taking on a geriatric camel, but, you know, that's kind of impressive. All right, they've taken some damage, but they should be healed up in less than well, half a day, hopefully. And then, uh, yeah, we'll just have someone come over and grab the camel corpse. You can just uh, pop back over here for now. I don't think you can haul anything yet, but uh, probably not at all. It's going to be a pure fighter. That means we've really is realistically got two colonists for the construction and doing everything else. And yeah, the psychopaths hitting on the... Yeah, the... the Second trimester woman. Good job, Smirk. You are uh, living up to that uh, that reputation of being a psychopath. And Pachette, how, how's she doing on that front? Um, hmm. No real care just yet. Rebuffed. Well, yeah, I mean, it is a little bit early to be, to be getting into it right about now. Okay, we'll skip it forward a bit until they've got most of this complete. I noticed Pichette was uh, cleaning up around the place. Yeah, I forgot to turn off the home zone expansion automatically. Uh, damn it, uh, we shall just get rid of that. 
Uh, people mention it's to stop fires getting up on your base. Yes, it does help with that, but more importantly, I don't want my people cleaning everywhere. Uh, Bichette, why are you still cleaning? Shouldn't you be... Yeah, get around to that if you wouldn't mind. We need that up and running as soon as possible so that we have a sealed room. All right, who's got the highest construction skill? We got a five and a four. Okay, Bichette will eventually surpass Smirk. However, right now... Yeah, Smirk's got a slightly higher percentage chance of completing that, or should, unless they've got anything affecting their... No, all their work speed and all that's good. Off you go, buddy. You do you. Okay, with that done, that gets us the cooler up and running. We should probably get a roof on this place as well. They will build it automatically once that cooler is in place, but I'm going to start on it now, and we're just going to put in... Actually, yeah, made of... Actually, I want to keep the wood... Thing is, we're actually running short. We won't have a lot of resources on this map. It's one of the downsides of being on a desert. However, it is pretty cool anyway, so let's do this. Uh, you. Give me a... Yeah, we've got limestone chunks. We've got slate rocks. We'll chop those up and turn them into bricks. Okay. Done? Yep. Oh, smirk failed while constructing the cooler. That's... Unfortunate. That's an expensive loss of resources. But it's fine. It's fine. It's just Randy being Randy. Come on! Twice? Smirk, you're messing with me here, buddy. Don't do that a third time. Ah. <sighs> what are you? You're cloud watching. Mm. No, we need furniture. Damn it. Okay, give me a table. Yeah, we're going to be making this. We can make it out of barrel of ice. I think we might want to keep that. Right, we want a tiny table. Uh, we'll stick that in the corner. And we'll give them a couple of stools to work with. And we'll give them some sleeping spots for now. I'll get them better beds later. It's just we're uh, a little bit tight at the moment. Okay, Smirk, come on. Third time's the charm. What is your percentage chance of doing a construction job? Construction chance success, 92%. 92%. Come on, this is your third attempt, buddy. Come on. Yes. Okay. We've got 500, we've used up half the steel in the area and we still got to put down a turbine and we haven't molded any of this. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. It's going to be a-okay. Oh no, they had to eat at the table. I'm sorry, Smirk. Whoa! What are you studying? Intro to recipes. Okay, he's, he's reading a cooking recipe. Nope, that, that's fine. Prioritize working on the table and then the steel, steel that, that bench thing. We need those up and running as quickly as possible so that no one has to eat without a table again. And dumb shit has almost actually healed up entirely. Huh. That's actually pretty awesome. Hey, tip, buddy, just just prioritize constructing the steel table if you wouldn't mind. You can do your reading later. Perfect. That is now a sealed room. We should probably get them some lights, but that's going to come with electricity. Okay. Where are you going? Okay, grabbing some more steel. We're going to haul that in. We're going to get ourselves a stone cutter's bench so that we can start cutting, getting out stone chunks. We're also going to want to finish the refrigeration unit. Well, we've got ourselves a sealed-in room for now. I think the next thing we're going to do is... Are you... Yep. I sent dumb shit over to attack another camel. We'll see how he does one-on-one -on -one against a fully... healthy camel. Oh, he's lost a toe. I, I don't think they come back. Okay, that uh, worked out. In fact, we'll bring you back home. I don't think they can bleed out, can they? Oh my god, they almost lost their leg. 11 and 10 hit points left in each one. Okay, that, we should be more careful about that. Slightly more careful. Have you almost finished putting that together? We need more wood and you are going to haul it. You are hauling 20 wood to wood. Can I say? Perfect. Wait, are both of them hauling materials to the same thing? They couldn't do that before. It used to be one person per construction project. Things have gotten better. Cleaning rock rubble. Nope, nope, nope. I want you to haul that. Yeah. I want you to bring that over to our refrigeration area, which is not set up yet, but we'll get around to it. Uh, also, as well as that, I think I'm going to put the power up here. Thing is, I was going to put the power in here, but then I realized something. Uh, namely, that I'm an idiot. Yeah, you can't fit the wind turbines in here without them getting cut off. So I need to put them either up here uh, and or over here or something along those lines. So they're going to be a bit exposed, at least to start. Uh, first things first, though, is I want this wooden stone cutter's table up and running so that we can start chopping up blocks. The reason we need blocks is we need to finish off this fridge. All right, you. Uh, you're going for a nap. Okay, well, when you come back, we're going to get you to do some of those. Uh, Schmirk is probably going to be the same. They'll grab a quick nap. How's everyone looking on the mood front? Not great. 
Not great. Eight without table. Yep. Eight without table and slightly environment. Oof, that is pretty rough. Transhumanist modded? Artificial enhancement matches my belief. Oh, wait. So the flesh whip is trans... This is perfect. So you're telling me we can turn them into flesh monsters and they're going to enjoy it because they're transhumanists? Yes. Okay, okay. So what kind of... Yep, that means we've got to study this at some point. Once we stabilize and get our crops planted, it'll be a few days, we can start studying the monolith and getting into like a, a little bit more of that body horror for our colonists. Well, Smirk is up first thing in the morning and they're hauling Fiona. Yeah, they're a, they're a psychopath. However, they're still going to dislike hauling that because seeing a corpse makes people very unhappy. That's why I'm hauling the corpse down here. It gave him a... Yeah, it didn't actually give him a debuff this time around. Never mind, they're going to go grab that now, and I think, Pichette, are you finished snapping? Please tell me you're finished snapping. Okay, just about. I want you to grab breakfast, and then immediately you want to get tucked into chopping up some rocks. Yep, we're going to need those to finish this wall. So maybe we should start... Yeah, Slate is actually the fastest ones to make as well. Uh, dumb shit is almost healed and ready to go take out another camel. And Smirk, I think there's better things you can be doing than doing that. We're going to plant some rice. Rice is just to get us started. Once the rice is down, we'll... Well, yeah, then we'll switch over to potatoes. Oh, and another thing you can do... Are those blocks finished? Yep, then we can start production of the fridge. There we go. All right. This place is actually starting to look like a really, really terrible colony. Uh, that's very much at risk of dying anytime soon. Don't mess it up, Smirk. Do not mess that up. That is a vitally important piece of tech. And if you waste the resources, we might not have enough left to do the actual power generation. Ooh, okay. Now, I'm going to put in the wind turbine over there. I, uh, we should have enough resources for it, just about. And then we're going to have to run the power cables from there down. But that should be very doable. Okay, Smirk's on top of that. In fact, we're going to have to put in a battery as well. Unfortunately, that can go right about there. Uh, power conduit. Damn it, Smirk! 92%! 92%! Uh, where is Pichette gone? Oh, yeah, I told her to dismantle this so that we could get more parts. And as well as that, I'm thinking... Over here, mine vein. Huh! Perfect. I like it. Alright. I was just checking out lamps, and it seems wall lamps are now a thing. Uh, I remember people claiming these things were absolutely vital in a mod they have to have, but now it seems they're built into the base game. Never used them myself, but I think I will be using them in future. Uh, uh, who have I got set up to do mining? Oh, Pichette has 13 in mining? We're going to strip mine this map. Well, we better strip mine it before she uh, she has that sprog. All right. What are you, uranium ore? No, you're, well, you'll be good for making clubs, I suppose. First thing in the morning, uh, Pichette botched the construction of the battery. Yep, it's fine. It's fine. It's just, it feels like there's a lot of botching of the most expensive stuff going on. Like, the walls, I think they had two botchings. But then it's like, oh, you, you want this thing? Th that'll, that'll be two botchings for you. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. All we got to do is get a battery down and some power cabling, and then we'll have semi-stabilized. Which reminds me, uh... I'm shit, maybe we should get you to eat some more right now. Yeah, that food's almost gone off, so maybe just consume some more of that to max out. Yeah, that stuff is going to go off in four hours, and you will probably care less about it then. Okay, for now, power conduits. Excellent. We can now run this down here. Right about there. Uh, and that light, once it's completed, should be able to actually light the place up so people aren't working in darkness anymore. Yeah, this has been a very sloppy start, but hey, it's been a while since I played. Also, that guy's arm is just super distracting, or tentacle, or whatever you want to call it. And where are you going? Oh, more steel on the map. I didn't realize there was a whole bunch of extra steel down here. Perfect. Uh, you don't go there. I want you to actually mine this out. You're really good at mining. 13 mining skills, so you should be able to take that out pretty quick. Perfect. We'll get them to do a bunch of this while they're here. Because of the length of time it's taking them to get anything done over here, I'm going to get them to haul the steel over here to the stockpiles at least. Uh, you, digging at compacted steel. Excellent. And you are... Digging a compacted steel. Uh, this is up and running. You will put you to... Uh, minus 19. Hopefully you can get that cold enough. And how are you doing? Hey, you beat together... In, you beat to death another dromedary. Uh, the last one is probably going to wander off the map soon. 
Nah, I'll let you heal up. We don't want to risk losing you just yet. Okay. So, we've got food planted. Our fridge might need another uh, cooler to be able to function in this weather. We could start double walling and stuff, but that's a, a whole other story. 72 wood. You know what? Another piece of wood there, and... Actually, we can rip that out. Now, the reason for the double doors is it stops the cold air leaking out as quickly. Never, ever put double doors adjacent to each other. That somehow drains heat out of an area or drains the temperature out quicker. I, I don't know how that works. It's something to do with doors. They're funky when it comes to temperature transfer. You use some weird things with incinerators with them. All right, now we need to get enough resources to put together a couple of beds so people aren't sleeping on the floor. And we might even get a heater in here if we can afford it. To help clean this place up as well, we're going to stick down a couple of shelves that can hopefully store some stuff. We also have to put down a hopper so we can load some meat into it. We need to put down a steel butcher's table so we can butcher up some of the animals. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, dumb shit might get a little bit hungry. We need to keep feeding them a good supply of meat. Uh, I'm not sure there's going to be enough meat on this map. We may have to, um, yeah, I'm not sure exactly how we're going to keep this guy happy long term. Well, we'll figure it out, or we'll dispose of them, one or the other. Wait, what the hell? How is Smirk so unhappy? I have not been keeping track of this. Steps in the coal, steps in the ground. Yeah, I need to get them beds, don't I? He's recreating right now. Once his recreation goes up a bit, he should get into non-break territory, but this is sloppy of me. I should have had recreation down and beds up. Uh, you need to all be stopped over here. Need to stop all of that, and we need to get down a couple of beds as soon as possible couple of steel beds that should keep them well at least a little bit happier right now we need to work on all of these debuffs uh, the awful barracks we're gonna get the yeah a bunch of this stuff stored on mats that should be fine or shelves that should cut down on the negative beauty oh and you can go punch that last camel to death then we'll take on the ostriches and whatever is left over all right uh we also need to get rid of well we need to make a statue which uh, that might be a minute uh, slept in the ground slept in the cold unsight the environment uh rebuffed so we got to clean the place and take the stuff off the ground and preferably get a statue up and running and get everyone beds. Then we'll be kind of on our way to getting where we need to be. First thing in the morning, they're onto the beds, horseshoe pin and steel chest table. I haven't been giving them any recreation or anything like that. I've been incredibly sloppy. Yeah, we got a bed, a oh, poor steel bed and a normal steel bed. Well, that's fallen monolith. A wave of dread passes over your colonists. The fallen monolith has begun to stir, slowly begins to twist and rearrange itself, morphing into something new. Within a matter of days, the process will be complete. Be prepared for whatever comes next. Well, it's not good. Um, hmm. Let's maybe expand that crop zone a little bit. You know, it just, in case whatever's near that ends up getting morphed into something it shouldn't be. All right, what do we need to fix here? Well, we would, we have, that is not done. We need more slate for that. You can fix that in a second. Pichette actually can manage this one. We shall unsuspend you. We're going to need some more of those blocks. That blocks allow us to finish off the fridge. Uh, then we're going to get rid of these two. We don't need those. No, oh, we've got a visitor out our way. Uh, Penelope Roth. Hello, Penelope. Now, you are kind. You've got any gear in you, package survival meals? No, I mean, I don't really see any need to annoy that faction, especially considering they're our closest trading partner. Yep, let's, um, passing through, I suppose. And there's a steam vent, and, oh, damn it, i got to carry these in. You are 2.5, you've got 1.7 days. Smirk, get over here immediately. take them both back to the fridge as soon as possible. This is finished. Uh, we've got a couple of camels in storage. You should probably grab that last camel while you're here. Uh, Dump shit's still recovering from their last camel boxing match, so we're going to wait a little bit before we send them off on anything else. Bichette's about to cut up some more stone blocks, but I think I want to tidy this place up a little bit. Uh, I want you to haul all of those and get them out of the way. That should put them up on the shelves. Actually, we should be able to... Huh. There we go, copy settings and paste settings. When it comes to assignments, uh, everyone's food policy is about to change. Everyone's going on to paste. One second, Pachette. Nope, 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 stop that. Uh, can you? Actually, maybe we have to get this out of the way first. This chunk here is where they operate the machine, so maybe, yeah, there we go. That was stopping them from accessing it. Uh, Dimshit's hanging around over by that. Should I be concerned? 
Does that mean they heal faster or something when they're near that? You know, you know what? Let's not worry about it. We've got a two turret packs here. In fact, I am going to force you to equip that turret pack. It seems to be a sort of a thing you can throw from what I can read on it. A wearable pack that allows the user to deploy a battery-powered turret. The pack contains a propulsion device letting the user launch the turret a short distance. These turrets are effective for flanking and distracting enemies. However, the turret's AI limited AI can't be directly controlled, so it can cause friendly fire incidents. The turret battery lasts for several hours. And uh, this sounds like a sort of a get-out-of-jail-free card for early combat. And you. Uh, prioritize hauling that, and then I'm going to want you to clean the barracks. Okay, everyone's getting their social relaxation in. Pachette. Yeah, recreation is going up. She... Uh... And smirk. Yeah, their recreation is pretty good as well. Schedule. I need to work on the schedule. It's not good enough right now, but uh, I'll figure it out later. Oh my god, how did you break already? And how many of these do we have left? 29. No, we got enough components. We'll be... We'll be okay. We'll be fine. Now, I think I'm going to link these two together. It's just, for now, we're just using this to store everything we can. Uh, components can go in there as well. And that just gets some more stuff off the floor. I do have to smash up the last of the blocks in here, but once that's done, this place, well, we can probably make it a little bit cleaner. Hi, Roth. That's right, just let yourself in and make yourself at home. That's perfectly fine. We're also going to deconstruct this over here to free up more fertile land for planting. Uh, I suppose it's close to the fallen monolith. Should I start investigating this now? I worry about insanity if we do that. Hmm... You know what? Let me get a little bit more stable, then we'll start investigating it. Oh, a gift from our visitor. What did you leave us? Three components. That is, uh... Yep, wonderful. Would you look at it? Even the soil around the monolith is pretty fertile. That's, um... Hmm. Yeah, I should probably figure out what this monolith is going to do in horrific ways. I should probably shouldn't have built a base so close to it. But hey, it is what it is. We'll find out the hard way. That's sort of the Rimworld way. Wait, it's summertime already? How long have I even been here? Uh, did pass since your arrival three. Okay. Um. Hmm. I feel like time's going real, real quick. I've chucked in this proximity detector just in case, though I may have to install it. It is a little bit of a power drainer. Power output seven. Actually, no, it's more than likely the cooler and the paste dispenser that are probably going to do that. All right. Oh, Emu Revenge. Yeah, well, I did send uh, dump shit on a little bit of a harvesting mission. So, let's see who wins, a ghoul or an emu. Come on. I suppose these things are pretty tough. Ask the Australians. No? Come on, you can take them down. You've taken it multiple camels. And problem solved. Okay then. Uh, this is the dumbest way I've ever done hunting. I think this would work better on a temperate map as well, where there'd be more animals, but... Mm. We'll see. Right now I'm going to clean the place up, smash up some marble, and preferably get ourselves a little statue going before Pestnet gets into her third trimester. She's already in her second, so... Um, where are you going? Ah, holding the emu. That is actually perfect. I didn't even have to tell him to do that. Ooh, it's that time again where you get to name your faction and give a name to your settlement. Ugh. Okay, I'll half-ass it now, but I'll be ex accepting suggestions if anyone comes up with anything better. So for our faction name, we're the Students of Cthulhu, and for the name of the actual settlement, we're Tentacles and Technology. Maybe I should reverse those. You know what? It doesn't make a difference. It's fine. We can change it later if it needs to, needs changing. But, uh, all right. What we're doing now? Where is everyone? Ah. Smirk is bringing up some steel. Pochette has been assigned to a little bit more of this steel mining. I kind of want to take out that one first, if you wouldn't mind. It's just that's under, well, Deep Mountain. And I want to wall that stuff in again as soon as possible. The thing about Deep Mountain is, yeah, that's that's where the bugs come from, and we would prefer to... Oh, okay. We'll dig all the way to the back, and then we're going to wall it in with uh, steel wall tiles to make sure that the bugs can't spawn. And that should... Wait, what are you doing? No, no, Praetor's worked on that for just one second. Done. So we got all the steel out, and you are consuming nutrient paste meal. But before you do that, could you haul a bunch of that steel back home? Yeah, that'd be nice. Thank you. Major brick risk. Oh. Sorry, sorry, ravenously hungry. I kept you from your food too long. Quick, 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 grab a meal. You'll be fine. Okay. Feeling better. Recreationally deprived. Okay, you know what? Let's get everyone just to do a bunch of recreation right now and get it out of the way with. I'm going to need to change that schedule. Uh, you. Yeah, playing chess. And you, what are you doing? You know what? You can haul all of that steel back and then go grab some recreation yourself. 
All right, this is turning out reasonably okay, and yeah, I should probably get them to start killing something else. There's an iguana over there, which is worth more for the meat. Excellent, everyone's mood is perking up. Okay, I need to sort the schedule now. First thing in the morning, after a nice nutrient paste meal, uh, you are going to get straight to the stonecutter's table, young lady. Uh, that actually sounds wrong, considering she's in her second trimester of pregnancy. She's not that young, is she? Actually, what age is she? 29. Eh. Once she gets a few of these done, we're going to get her to put together a statue. Uh, you are playing horseshoe pins. Actually, we should both be just recreating right now. I want you to max out that recreation to make sure none of you are going to have any more mental breaks. Wait, an emu self-tamed? I mean... Yay? Uh... Are they zonable even? Nope. In that case, uh, excuse me for one second while we take care of the problem. Actually, wait, we've got a mad iguana we gotta take care of first. Uh, is this our first threat? Feels a bit weak sauce for 500%, but, uh, wait, no, that's not the mad one. Mad and Manhunter right there, perfect. Uh, we have just the nutter to take care of the problem. Run down there and start punching it in the face, or clawing it, whatever that is. Yeah, it's got claws and teeth. Okay. And it seems to... Oh my god, its toe's grown back. That's actually kind of cool. That means that even if it gets badly damaged, it can still repair itself. That is excellent. Alright, you. Are you done with that? Go cloud watching. Uh, once you've got your recreation fully maxed out, what we'll do is uh, we'll get you back to do that statue. All we've done is queued up a marble sculpture, me uh, a large marble sculpture, not the extra large, not the small, the, the medium large, whatever the hell you call it. There's only three options. Uh, we're going to leave Smirk over here mining some steel, but I think that's got us good for a while. We've got enough meat in here to keep us going. We're growing rice. Uh, we're not going to need that much of it. Then we're going to switch over to potatoes after that. In fact, do we have enough blocks yet? We have 212 slate blocks. We might start walling this place in as well. That would make our lives a little bit safer. In fact, yeah, the moment Smirk finishes that, I'm going to bring him back up over here and they can start walling in this section. I think I should really let Pachette help out with this on the grounds that she's meant to be our number one builder when the time comes. Like, her construction's already at six. Smirk's is only at five. So Pachette is just going to, like, keep outshining them. So we should really get in that experience beef as quickly as possible, so to speak. And it'll also cut down on the uh, botched construction jobs. Instead, we'll smitch, ah, switch Smirk over to doing the stone cutting. That might be a smarter plan. Uh, you can be reinstalled right there. End of the day, we've actually got half of the field walled in. I mean, okay, I really should be concentrating on getting that statue out just to drag up the beauty in here, but I think we're okay. Oh, and... Yeah, them should kill that emu, which we should probably add to our food storage. We don't have a lot of... Actually, we do have enough leather that we could start making some clothing. The problem is, we don't have anyone who's any good at it. We've only really started with two colonists, which makes... Well, bringing viable skills, especially with the method where we have to pick only certain traits, we're going to be trapped for a long time on a very low colonist number, until, you know, the odd psychopath or body modder wanders through. Wait, what? Baby prep? Uh, Prashetta's due to give birth in us in six days. You can prepare for the way to build a birth room with a clean floor and a good bed. Get a skilled doctor ready. Well, that could be a problem. In the work tab, assign at least one person to childcare. Prepare a food source for the baby. Prashetta can breastfeed the baby, or you can feed them baby food. Yeah, we, we don't have a cook thing, so... Yeah, breastfeeding it is. Build a crib. High-quality cribs will make a baby happy. You can make baby food at a stove or campfire. Yeah, so we're gonna need a crib anyway. Uh, we can have Prashetta build it. I mean... Yep, she's going to be one of those all-around working moms. Uh, she's going to build the crib that the kid is in. She's going to feed the kid. She's going to raise the kid. She's probably going to end up teaching the kid. Crib completed. Uh, oh, and maybe someone get that out of the doorway. Damn it, Smirk. You left the steel right in that doorway from your first botched attempt at making the doorway. Uh, I find steel doors are one of the best ones to put in, namely because, well, they're fast. We have an opening speed of about 100%. Wood is 120, which is a little bit faster, but if you try using stone, it's just incredibly slow. Ah, Psychic Suit Mail. That'll help Smirk out. It's the end of day six. Uh, days past since our arrival is six. Or actually, the end of day five going into day six. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We're now into the first hour of the next day. So yeah, we've done five days. 
Needs wise, low expectations, uh, recreation fully satisfied, additional optimism. Ooh, that's going to wear off in 1.2 days. That's going to suck. Spacious interior, comfortable, transhumanist modded, awful barracks is still minus seven, but we're working on it. We can floor this at some point, but that's an awful lot of resources. Actually, we could go with concrete. Hmm. Concrete is very, very cheap. One steel per tile, and we could make this place a lot nicer. What's it currently looking like on the happiness front? Minus threes. Oof. You know what? Once we get those slag chunks out of there, maybe get in a, a statue or two, I think this place will be fine. Perfect place to raise a child. But for now, this is where we're going to end it. We have a plan. We know exactly what we're going to do. We, we're playing a scientific research group, and they're going to go down a little bit of a darker path, and they're sort of slowly going to morally degrade as they go along, and they're going to, like, just... The religion is going to tilt a little bit more towards the Cthulhu side as they go. And, you know... Technology, tentacles, stuff like that. We'll, we'll see what happens. Or we'll all die horrifically if, you know, we, unawake, we awaken a horror we probably shouldn't have. Uh, either way, I'm pretty happy with it. We'll just have to wait till Preshet pops out that sprog. I don't want to, like, have something horrible happen to her, like her going insane or getting possessed. While she's pregnant, that could be really complicated. So once the kid's out, then we can get on with the horror stuff. Anyway, this has been RimWorld Anomaly. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck.